Hi everybody. Welcome to McKellar Motivational Monday. It's been a while. Um, I hope I remember to put the title. I feel like it's been a while. You know why? Because last week I completely forgot um, that it was Monday because of the holiday, because of Veterans Day. And I, it was like Thursday last week before I realized, wait a minute, when is Monday coming up soon? I don't know what was going on. Anyway, hi everyone. So welcome, welcome to Monday, welcome to the Danny Cam. Thank you so much for joining me again. Um, I'm on Facebook Live and Periscope and Instagram Live all at the same time. Because I'm a multitasker and I like getting a lot done, <laughs> I like reaching a lot of you guys. Happy almost Thanksgiving. Yes, we're about today we would talk about um, uh, <laughs> Bruins over the Trojans. I know, I know, UCLA won. And my stepson was not very happy about that, but that's okay. Uh, I thought we'd talk about gratitude because Thanksgiving is coming up and it's not always easy to feel gratitude. You know, we, so many people are like, oh my gosh, gratitude and I love gratitude and I'm just like so into gratitude and let's all be grateful. And I have plenty of those times myself. I also have times where I'm not in touch with that feeling. I'm not. And it just doesn't work. And I think forcing it is not a good idea. Um, so I want to talk to you guys about what to do if you really want to feel grateful, but you just don't. Also, family drama um, is a thing around the holidays. So how, like, how do we handle family drama? <laughs> I'd love to hear your ideas about that as well. I don't have any active family drama going on at the moment, which I'm very grateful for, um, but you know, it happens. You're thankful for your family? Oh, that's nice. You guys, yeah, what are you thankful for? What are you feeling thankful for right now? And where are you watching from? I, love, I always love hearing where you guys are watching from because, no, I don't talk about politics. Haven't you noticed? <laughs> I don't go there. I'm not into it. You're going through family drama right now. Leho 116, I'm sorry to hear that. In my opinion, generally speaking, when family drama is going on, the best thing to do is not to participate. I mean, that's just my gut instinct on it is just not to participate because usually you say something and then it gets worse right so your son has recovered from cancer that's an amazing thing to be grateful for thank you so much for sharing that bcos i don't know how to say your name <laughs> your mom and your cats your family no i'm not saying avoid family i'm saying don't participate in the drama and you know what, when everybody gets together for family and there are a lot of people together all in the same place and like there's the big elephant in the room, I was gonna say the white elephant, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna make some metaphors. Um, just talk about other stuff. You don't have to get into the meat of it. Talk about, you know, if there's kids there, how's school going? Um, talk about the weather, talk about easy stuff, not politics, not religion. I mean, unless if you all, all agree on whatever it is, then sure, but you know what I mean? It's just that kind of time where we want to avoid drama. Um, why is this doing that? There we go. Math babe. <laughs> yes, Jones, I am the girl from the Wonder Years. It is true. That is me. It's a long time ago. Every day, you guys, every day people bring up the Wonder Years. Every single day. I'm, and speaking of grateful, I am grateful for that. But that takes work. It takes work to be grateful for something that like feels like a blessing, but sometimes you, you kind of wonder, like really the same, we're gonna have the same conversation. But the truth is it means, the show means so much to people that I have to just, you know, recenter. And this is actually a great way to start talking about this thing, about how to feel grateful when you're not necessarily feeling grateful at the moment. Just take time to reflect. Take time to get perspective. Imagine if you didn't have whatever is in your life that you're taking for granted right now. It was a great show, Teresa, uh, Teresa, Kansas. You just saw me on Dancing with the Stars? Well, a couple weeks ago, I was there in the audience. I stole your your man, Kevin Arnold. Oh, sorry about that. But it, you know what? It was like 25 years ago, so you could probably get him back, I, I bet. Bath time, math time. Oh, thank you. Yes, that's one of my math books for little kids, bath time, math time. Honestly, I just thought it rhymed. It was so cute. I had to write a book. I had to write a bath time book about math, and I did. Oh, thank you, Jewel. Uh, she says that she appreciates my work on the Wonder Years, but um, appreciates my mathematical skills even more. That's very, very sweet. But here's the thing. We all have stuff that we take for granted. Every day, we take them for granted. Whether it's our health, um, our ability to walk, uh, a family member, uh, a pet, whatever it is, 
we might feel grateful sometimes and then other times we take them for granted and or a spouse you know something that you have every day around you with you whatever it is those things are the easiest to take for granted and those it feels so much here why am i even talking about gratitude i'm not talking about gratitude because i think we should all make the world a better place although that'd be great with our gratitude and spreading love and spreading gratitude and that's great but why i'm talking what do i talk about on these broadcasts mostly it's mostly about how to improve our own lives which of course has a ripple effect. Of course it does, but we can't be there for other people until we're there for ourselves. I believe that very strongly. So, and, and yes, we can do it all at the same time, but we can't leave out ourselves. Gratitude feels good. It feels good to feel grateful. It's healthy to feel grateful. Everything gets better when we're feeling grateful, when we're feeling gratitude. It's just that we're not always in touch with that feeling. We're not always ready to be having that feeling. Sometimes it's because we aren't feeling well. Sometimes we don't, we haven't had enough sleep, we're not eating properly, we're not taking care of ourselves in those basic ways, we're isolating ourselves, we're, we're, we're on our phones all the time, we're forgetting to reach out to people and call people and see people and do things out in the world. Whatever it is, there's something you can do to shake things up and, 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 and just not take some of these things for granted and it feels so much better. So if you're not feeling grateful, Am I getting enough sleep? And am I getting the right kind of food? Am I surrounding myself with the right kind of people? Because we will become like the people we surround ourselves with. Don't forget that, you guys. It's true. We will become like the people we surround ourselves with. So choose wisely. Choose carefully. Something else that I... Um, uh, so I don't... Time does not... For you, Danica. I'm going to assume you were saying something nice. So thank you. Oh, thank you. You're loving my Hallmark Christmas movies. Thank you so much. My sister is awesome. Um, see, somebody just said, hey, it's Winnie. <laughs> R1 forever. Thank you. Yes, it is. 25 years later. Um, I almost lost my train of thought. Maybe I have. I know we're talking about gratitude. There was something I was going to say, though, and I'm not sure what it was. Um, Tom Bergeron is an awesome guy. So basically, what I'm saying is we are here... We get together for McKellar Motivational Monday because I believe there are tools that we have that we forget that we have, that we, can, that we can use to feel better and be better and have more productive lives, have more fulfilling lives, and spread love and joy and all that stuff too. So if we're not feeling like we're in the mood to be grateful and we have had enough food and rest and we're surrounding ourselves with the right kind of people and we're getting exercise exercise is a big thing because if we don't move our bodies then all the things all the processes that are going on or that's supposed to be going on in our body can't they can't do their job we need to be pumping our muscles and getting the circulation moving and having everything do what it's supposed to do just like we see in the textbooks that we saw in elementary school all the things all our different the hormonal systems that we have digestive systems you know the whatever they need to move we need to move in order why am i so shiny we need to move our bodies in order to make those things happen so move your body get the food if all that's going on and you're still just not feeling in touch with like your heart just isn't open enough to feel gratitude there are a couple of tricks one of them is literally say what if i didn't have my spouse what if i didn't have that person what if i didn't have my child what if I didn't have my pet? What if I didn't have this job that I complain about all the time? You know, whatever it is that you're feeling. Un By the way, I love my all my jobs so much. So that's not me. But like sometimes people, I mean, you know, when you have a job that that's, it, that's um, fulfilling and it's great, but there's some little thing about it that's bothering you. It's like, okay, perspective. Take a step back. Take a step back. Take a breath. Oh, yeah, breathing. Breathing is the other key thing that a lot of us forget to do correctly. When I'm working really hard, I end up holding my breath. And then that doesn't bode well for anything, really. I'm like, oh, I need to like, oh, I'll be like, I'll be at my desk working. I'm like, okay, I need to breathe. <laughs> yes, exercise. Self-help books. You know, some self-help books can be really, really useful, depending on if it resonates with you. For me, The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. Again, it's called The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. I love this book. I just, I love it. It speaks to me on so many levels. For a while, I was even doing these Motivational Mondays about that. When you hold your breath a lot, time to breathe. 
<laughs> I wish I had I had the ability to just cast all my fans in my Hallmark Channel movies. So many of my fans say, can I be in your Hallmark Channel movie with you? And I'm like, it's not up to me. We should just like a big group scene where all the Hallmarkies come and they're just all in the movie. I'll have to pitch that at some point. Yes, meditation. Meditation is a wonderful, wonderful tool as well. Um, so yeah, asking yourself, like really put yourself in, and as an actress, I know that I get a lot of practice with this. Well, how would I feel if such and such? Because I'm playing these roles. But we are all actors in life in some way, and, and, and I invite you guys to try this. Really, what would it be like if I didn't have such and such or this person in my life? And sometimes, or sometimes, I know this is, this is a silly trick. It's a silly psychological trick. But imagine if, you're, um, if your spouse, um, you're taking them for granted. Imagine if somebody else were really interested in them all of a sudden. Like sort of the, like play on your little primal jealousy reflex. What if, what if there was like interest between your spouse and someone else? How would you feel then? Suddenly are you a little more, you know, present? A little more grateful? <laughs> it's just a silly trick. Um, I find these sort of, you know, these tricks can be useful for a moment here and there. Another thing I love to do is writing in a journal. If I don't feel the way I want to feel about something, I don't feel the way I want to feel about something. I will write in my journal and that almost always works. Just like, why don't I feel this way? And I just, you can be, you just be totally honest with yourself. You know, something else, I, a trick that I devised, it's actually in one of my books, my math books that I have for teenage girls, I have all these like little life tips in them. And one of them is when you're writing in your journal, this one is in my algebra book. It's called Hot X, Algebra Exposed. It's for algebra one in high school or junior high, whenever um, someone's taking algebra one. I said, if you write in your journal and you, you want to write things that you're too embarrassed to even admit to anybody or even to yourself really, write it down in one line and then keep writing over that same line. And you, you have the feeling of getting it out and then nobody could even, even read it and just keep writing over the same line over and over and over again. And get out those, those ugly, dark, angry feelings and get that stuff out because if you don't do that, you can't make space. You need to make space for gratitude. If those things are clogging you up, and you need to make space for them. I say express it in a nonviolent way without involving other people at all. Write it in a journal. And if you have to write it, hand write it over that one line over and over so nobody ever sees it, so be it. It works. I've done it before. So anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's uh, you know, random divergent. I get a lot of energy from you guys because I just really appreciate this interaction. And I find that I get energized. So I really, I really believe that we forget so often some of the tools that we have. And if we just remembered it, maybe we would do it and we'd help to improve ourselves. And you know what? Honestly, I say this stuff. I join up with you guys as much for me as anything. I get reminded of these things too. I'm not perfect. I have all sorts of moments of imperfection. And my Make Color Motivational Mondays help me too, for real. So thank you guys for all being here. Because if you didn't, I'd be just, just talking into a mirror. And that would be, that would be creepy for me. <laughs> do I like pumpkin pie? Yes, I do. I really do like pumpkin pie. My mom makes a really good one. Yeah, what's your guys' favorite Thanksgiving food that you're excited to eat, to eat? Speaking of gratitude, what are you guys going to eat that you're super excited about? I mean, yes, yeah, smiling helps the endorphins flow, absolutely. What's, what's your favorite, what's the food you're looking forward to? I'm looking forward to my mom's pumpkin pie because she, she does an amazing job and it's just the best. Pecan pie is your favorite? You need to journal about you starting the practice of journaling? Excellent. Coin souffle. How do I stay so slim during the holidays? Okay, you know what my trick is for the holidays is that I eat the healthiest food. So I'll eat like turkey breast, you know, um, vegetables that are on the side, salad. Uh, mashed potatoes, but not too much, really depending. I try to eat the veggies. My mom makes these amazing carrots that I love and Brussels sprouts. I load up on that. And then when everyone's getting dessert, I have one more round of like the vegetables or whatever. And I, and then by that point, I'm so full that I just, I'll just have like a, a sliver of the pumpkin pie. That's my secret. Plus exercise. Apple pie. I don't know that I would do a vegan vegan Thanksgiving because you know what? I just, I'm a little hesitant about soy products and usually you, you end up with like a big soy, you know, tofurkey or whatever. They say that, I don't know, they say soy has estrogen in it and that's not good for you. 
Carrot sticks and apples, no, you still need to, like, that sounds really boring. Cheerios, you guys, I will admit, I eat cereal late at night. Not Cheerios, but just like brown puffed rice. I just love it. Uh, do I exercise every day? Not every day, um, but I try to exercise like at least five days a week. And when I can't exercise, I stretch for sure. You know what, let's just right now. Cranberry desserts, yummy. Everybody just roll your shoulders. Family size can of ravioli. Sweet potato with marshmallows. Mmm. Yeah, this is going to make me hungry. I Look into it, Andrew. Soy has estrogen. That's what I've read. Oh, my pleasure. Para, para, cool. Cranberry sauce? Yeah. Cheerios are sausages in Australia. I don't know. Oh, is, really? So when you say Cheerios, that means sausages in Australia? I wonder if that's what they were talking about. I don't know now. Puffed rice? So everybody, is everybody like rolling your shoulders? The only reason I'm doing this is because we're talking about exercising every day um, and how we probably can't necessarily do that. And even stretching is really great. Oh, stretching, just stretch you guys, stretch. Oh. Oh. Chocolate pie, Velveeta shells and cheese with bacon. <laughs> wow, that sounds super healthy, <laughs> but yummy. Chinese food, really? For Thanksgiving, okay, hey, no judging here. My favorite stretch? Oh, I have a lot of stretches that I really like. Are some of them soy free? I just get kind of weirded out. I don't like processed foods. I don't like overly processed foods. I like eating things in the natural form. So I don't want to look at something that looks like a turkey, but it's not a turkey. I just don't want to do that. Pumpkin pie. Your neck crack. Well, be careful, Roxy, but I'm, I hope it felt good. Bat's milk? I don't know what that is. Most soy is genetically modified. Yeah, I think that's true as well. You are vegan for animal rights and you don't want the animals hurt or killed for. You know, I'm, I, I totally hear you. I'm very careful about where I get my meat from. Um, very careful. There's a great um, butcher here called uh, Belcampo and they have, they have these organic farm, farms. They're humanely raised and they're hum humanely killed as well. And that's really important. Burger King for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, stretching is okay, Elizabeth. That makes sense. Um, I don't know a lot about that uh, about that disease, but but you know, stretching is so if it's essential for you, I'm glad you're doing it every day. But it's also just really good for all of us, and we forget. I missed somebody just asked for a kiss. And I missed who it was, but I'll send a kiss to all you guys. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Uh, just plain Skippy, I am right now streaming on Facebook Live, Periscope, and Instagram Live. And I think we're going to wrap it up. Um, thank you so much. If somebody said Burger King, I don't know who said that. I don't eat Burger King. I try to stay far away from fast foods because of the processed thing. But this is the way I do my life. Everybody do your thing that works for you. But for me, uh, I found that a lot, of, a lot of that stuff is just so processed and so many chemicals in it and it's not good for your body. <laughs> Do my best, ID sign. Thank you. It's a TriCast. Yes, it is. Hi, Joe Snar. There's your shout out. Thanks, Joe Sutton. My mom used to have a friend named Joe Sutton. Are you my mom's friend, Joe Sutton? Or you guys used to be friends? What is the most popular dessert on Thanksgiving? I think it's pumpkin pie, right? Isn't it? Or is it pecan pie? I don't know. I just, I, I love Thanksgiving because I love eating. I just try to eat healthy foods. But I do, if you saw my plate at Thanksgiving, you'd be like, wow, that's a lot of food. Is she gonna finish that? And then, yes, I do. Somebody said don't uh, waste food. I, I do not like wasting food. I hate wasting food. Just ask my husband. I'm like, don't waste that. We'll wrap it up. We'll eat it tomorrow. You know? <laughs> I will say hi to Drago for you, Don. No, nachos, they don't fit my criteria <laughs> for food. Favorite, my favorite Thanksgiving food? Um, well, my favorite dessert is pumpkin pie for sure. Uh, my favorite food at Thanksgiving is my mom's Brussels sprouts. She sauteed Brussels sprouts with garlic and olive oil and salt and pepper, and it is just 
they're just to die for. I, I love it. No leftovers left behind. That's right. Would I do a cooking show? I'm not really a chef. I love healthy food. Um, but I mean, I sure. I'd, have, I'd need help, though, <laughs> with the recipes. Yes, I have a Hallmark. So, you guys, I have a Hallmark Channel movie coming out. Um, except it's not Hallmark Channel. It's Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. My movie is called Christmas at Grand Valley. It airs December 22nd on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, which is the sister channel to Hallmark Channel. Why is it on that channel instead of Hallmark Channel this year? Because that's different. Usually, this is my first time on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. I've always been on a Hallmark Channel before. Um, I don't know if it'll be on Hallmark later. I don't know. This is a really good question. Maybe. I don't know. They um, wanted to be on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries, I think, for two reasons. One is I'm going to be on that channel, I think, next year. <laughs> my, Chris, my mystery wheel, uh, the mystery franchise of movies that we're um, putting together right now, we think it's going to be 2019. At this rate, it might be 2020, but it's kind of a fun, um, you know, entrance onto that channel. Uh, but also, that channel, so Hallmark Movies and Mysteries and Hallmark Channel Movies are slightly different from each other. Hallmark Channel Movies tend to be more lighthearted um, romance uh, movies. And Hallmark Movies and Mysteries tends to be a little bit more of the, um, a little more drama, a little more emotion, a little more heartfelt stories. And my Hallmark Channel movies have always had a little bit of that in them because that's just kind of who I am. And this one, they were like, you know what, let's, let's put this on the channel that's more known for these more emotional, heartfelt stories. And um, so it'll be my first time. And I hope you guys get that channel because it's a different channel. It's not Hallmark Channel, it's Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. It's on Hallmark Mysteries on the cheaper direct TV now plan, but not on the most expensive plan. Okay, that's odd. So wait, it's, yes, and Lacey went to Hallmark Mystery as well. So I hope that you guys get that channel too, because not everybody has both channels. And I really want to share that with you, especially because, um, Dan Loria is in the movie with me. So Brennan Elliott is my co-star. Dan Loria, who played the dad on The Wonder Years, is playing my dad in this Christmas movie. And I, it's just, it was just like magic being with him on this movie. It was just so sweet having him be my dad. And I'm really excited to share that with you. December 22nd, again, on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. So um, I hope you guys uh, enjoy uh, that movie. I'm sure I'll be talking about it more in the future. I'm going to go. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for watching the Dan and Cam. I appreciate all your follows, all your shares. You guys are great. And uh, I'll see you very soon. Okay. Mwah. Bye.